gentlemen, we're back again. This time we are doing a full seven round mock draft for the Buffalo Bills. So I want to try to start doing more team specific. And if I'm able to keep these short and sweet, um, I can crank these out a little faster. So uh, hopefully I can keep the time down and I can start doing these. I don't know if, if once a day is realistic, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, as far as the first round mock drafts, I'm going to have another one come out, but I want to wait until the conclusion of today's games and then Monday's games so that we can reset the draft order and uh, also kind of take a look at maybe some weaknesses. Maybe just do like an overreaction mock just for fun. Just, oh, look, who's terrible for one week? Let's draft somebody to replace him. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But today, as I've said, uh, I don't pick the draft orders. I just find the draft orders. And as of right now, actually, technically, the Falcons are drafting first overall because they have a loss. But I went to the second team, and that was the Buffalo Bills. So that's what we're doing first. We're going to do a seven-round mock draft for the Buffalo Bills, who have eight picks so far. Um, they have a second seventh-round pick from the Carolina Panthers. So without further ado, again, check out the comment section if you'd like to you know, help out, uh, get in the Facebook group, all that stuff. Links are in the description. With the first overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, Houston. So, assuming most people are going to say that should have been Nick Bosa, we need outside linebacker help or defensive end help, I guess, right? I think. Um, but I don't know. I think in most cases we're looking at Nick Bosa, but outside of me wanting to mix it up once in a while and not just have everyone do Nick Bosa over and over and over again, um, I think if it's the Buffalo Bills, you got to consider Red Oliver. I think in terms of who's more dominant at the position, I don't know that it's impossible Ed Oliver is not number one. Um, I also think that a lot of what makes Nick Bosa better is the idea that the outside, or the edge rush position is much more important than defensive tackle. But, you know, if, I guess you could look at it as Ed Oliver is a pass rusher. He just is. So he's going to help this team in terms of helping against the run, fortifying the middle of this defense, which needs a lot of help. But also you're getting a top tier pass rusher all in one package. So it's going to be kind of hard to pass that up in my mind. Um, Either way, you're not going to be upset with that Oliver. He's just an absolute monster. Uh, I do think defensive tackle is the biggest weakness on this team. I don't know that, but that is my thought. I know you got some guys that have had some success in the past. Maybe you think I'm being disrespectful, whatever, but I don't see a whole lot of, you know, it's been, what, five years since, you know, these guys have been any good, and they're getting close to the end of their their run. So I'm looking to replace these guys. I'm looking to upgrade. I'm looking to help this run defense and give you a pass rusher all in one package so um you know and i understand there's also a couple of young guys you got uh i don't know i don't know we'll see but um as far as on the edge I, we'll try to address that as best as we can i went with this but I, I also looked at it and said you guys got jerry hughes and you know he's got his moments you got lawson and murphy which aren't great but they're very young and their arrow seems to be pointing up so we're gonna kind of bet on them doing a little something but either way overall I'm gonna go with Ed Oliver over Nick Bosa over obviously over a quarterback but I don't know who else you put in that spot Ed Oliver is gonna go number one overall with the 33rd pick in the second round of the 2019 NFL draft the Buffalo Bills select Greg Little offensive tackle Ole Miss now I, I did consider wide receiver here very stacked wide receiver class, and I just don't know what to make of the wide receivers in Buffalo. Um, but when I looked at somebody, I was like, okay, what kind of a wide receiver do I want? We got Josh Allen, big, strong arm. It would be nice to get sort of a big-bodied wide receiver. And then I thought, well, you've got Kelvin Benjamin. Okay, what about a speedster? He can get down the field and Josh Allen can just unload it. Oh, yeah, you got that guy too. Tell you what, let's go somewhere else with this. So I went Greg Little. I think it's going to be tough to find top-tier offensive tackle talent outside of the top two rounds. This is the top of the second round. It's basically a late first-round pick. 
Um, and I do think offensive line is actually somewhat of a weakness as I looked at it. It's one of the other biggest, bigger weaknesses. Again, I don't know the Bills' perception of it, but uh, especially at right tackle. Your, your left tackle had a good rookie year, so hopefully that's fortified. But the right tackle spot is not very good, and that's where I want um, Greg Little to come in. You know, you've got a rookie quarterback, you've got to protect him, but also I'm getting tired of seeing LaShawn McCoy have to create magic in the backfield all the time so it's not just tackle it's it's guard and it's center and it's everybody else he's a very talented running back I don't know how much longer he's going to be playing for the Buffalo Bills or in the NFL in general or how long he's still going to be able to play at a high level let's try to get this fixed now so we can make a push while we have him in the backfield while we have the wide receivers while we have the young quarterback we got all this stuff let's make a push this year and let's just see if we can make something happen moving right along with the 65th pick in the third round of the 2019 NFL draft the Buffalo Bills select Porter Gustin edge rusher USC so I passed on it in the first two rounds I did say it's somewhat of a need and I fully understand that I could have gone second round but again I want to help the offense I want to help the offensive line Um, you know defense is important but if you're not scoring points what's the point Um, especially when we're talking about protecting a quarterback right we've seen over and over and over again you get a brand new spanking quarterback and then he gets injured Deshaun Watson and you kind of get into this issue Derek Carr where they never really see their career take off Andrew Luck because of all the injuries because we're going out and trying to get guys like T.Y. Hilton and, and DeAndre Hopkins and we think that's good enough and we don't really need to protect them and then their careers are never what they should have been but in the third round, I want to address it because Porter Gustin looks to be a pretty talented guy, six foot four, two hundred and fifty-five pounds. Uh, he does play outside linebacker for USC, but he does have similar size to the current defensive ends that you guys have. The guy's just—I mean, he's—he's he's clearly on steroids. I mean, the guy is just—you look at pictures of him. I don't know, at the beginning of his USC career, and he's just kind of like a jacked kind of dude, right? He's, he's he's fit, he's in shape, you can tell he takes that stuff seriously, health and, and all that. You look at him now, though, I mean, look at this picture. The dude looks fat. He looks like an offensive lineman. That's muscle. He has a second chin that's pure muscle. It's insane. This guy's just, whatever. Um, hopefully, he can translate some of that raw power into the NFL without being detected for the massive amount of... Uh, steroids in his body. Anyways, um, he does struggle to stay healthy, which is a big issue. Um, We'll have to see how much of an issue that is. If he's able to play out this full year and if he's able to impress, he might go higher than this. If he has any injuries whatsoever this year, he's going to slide real far because the fact of the matter is if you've got a guy that's supposed to be a top-tier pass rusher and they can't stay healthy, Nick Perry, um, they're not very much use to you right? It's just, it's not going to work out. So anyways, as of right now, I'm good with it. I don't want to go too much later than the third round to try to get another pass rusher because similar to offensive tackle, quarterback, all that stuff, the talent just tanks because if you have the ability to get after a quarterback, you're getting snapped up in no time. Moving along, with the 97th pick in the fourth round of the 2019 NFL draft, the Buffalo Bills select Jesse Burkett, offensive center, Stanford. Going with offensive line again. I'm picking on it a little bit. Um, I know that the center's maybe the second best position if I had to get actually maybe left tackle, then left guard ish, maybe then center. I'm not really sure, but the center's been very up and down, very volatile. Not sure how much I care for him, but again, you look at LaShawn McCoy and what he's been able to do, and not just him, the emergence of Taiwan Jones last year, which just kind of blew up and came out of nowhere. I really want to get this right. And I know I'm, I'm, I guess, I guess I never really liked offensive line until I started doing this channel and started really delving into things and seeing how many teams neglect offensive line and how important it is because you got running backs that can't, you know, again, the Texans are just, they're squandering. They've, they've got this quarterback, they're squandering it. They've got these wide receivers they can't get to because the quarterback is getting chased around all over the place they run the ball a ton with a decent quarter running back back there and he can't go anywhere because the offensive line is garbage i know this isn't about the texans but man does that drive me nuts to see that the dallas cowboys look how good they were for that one year you know why because they had the best most dominant offensive line i think i've ever seen in my entire life they allowed it to deteriorate and they don't even care 
Like, well, whatever, we got Ezekiel Elliott, that's all that matters. No, 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 it ain't. It's not how that works, but they'll learn, I guess. Anyways, we're the Buffalo Bills. We're not going to allow that to happen because we understand running the ball and passing the ball is pretty much all an offense can do, and none of those things happen without an offensive line. So we're going to take this seriously. We're going to hammer this. We've got a left tackle that we like. He's very, very young. He's very, very talented. We now have a right tackle in Greg Little that we like very, very much. He's very, very young. He's very, very talented. Now we've got a guy dead center of our offensive line, Jesse Burkett, that's going to anchor this whole thing down. We're just going to hammer it home. And, and, and I think Jesse Burkett maybe has the ability to slide out to guard. We've seen many people that are drafted as centers that move over to guard. That might be our best play. But either way, we've got an interior offensive lineman. We can come in. We can work him out. We can try him out. We can see where he fits and just find the best five guys across this offensive line to improve our offense and, um, you know, I don't know, try to win some games once in a while. I don't I, Please win some games in that division. It's it's way too easy. You guys make it too easy over there for the Patriots, and it drives me nuts. Please be better. Win football games. With the 129th pick in the fifth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Blesson Austin, cornerback out of Rutgers. I like the Bills secondary. I like what you have over there, but it's far from perfect. I avoided taking a slot corner in round four, because I want to see what Teron Johnson can do. I want to see, you know, he's a rookie, so let's just see what he can do. With that said, opposite Tredavious White, what exactly do we have? Nothing that I like or that I want to hang on to, and as I've said several times, you need at least three corners. Right? It's it's not just good enough to have one lockdown corner. I know you got two really good safeties. Tredavious White is a absolute freak show. Maybe you got a guy in the slot, but what about that other spot? Tredavious can't cover two guys at once. So this is going to be the guy. I know fifth round's a little bit late, but we we got to at least take a swing at it. But if we can fix that spot and at least make it a little bit more competitive, and if Teron can hold his own in the slot, we got a really lethal group here. Because remember, Tredavious is going to go up against those number ones, and that's going to be the biggest impact. Um, there's going to be some really talented slot guys, so we really want Teron to hold his own. But there are several teams who've got two. And at the very least, I would say most teams have a mediocre number two that you got to be able to match up against. That's going to be Blisson Austin. That's who we're, we're hoping he's going to be. Six foot, 195, estimated four, five, six. Nothing super physical, physically imposing. He's just a solid football player, and that's all we really want, right? I don't need you to run a four, two, four. I don't need you to be six foot five. Just be a solid football player that can take on the number two wide receiver. That's all I'm looking for. Moving right along with the 161st pick in the sixth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Alex Bars, offensive guard, Notre Dame. Yes, another one. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I want this fixed this year. And, and you also have to understand there's there's no 100% hit rate, right? If, if We've got two interior offensive linemen. We need at least two, maybe three, and a right tackle. We've got three, and it's almost impossible all three are going to pan out and be starters. So we're taking multiple swings to at least upgrade one or two of these spots. You know, darn sure better have right tackle figured out if we're going to invest a second-round pick in Greg Little. Hopefully we can get at least one, if not two, of these interior offensive linemen upgraded. So um, it, it really isn't a ton more... To explain because I've hammered this now three different times um, I just I don't know why anybody would dislike this plan necessarily uh, we're gonna try to work on the interior of our defense we're gonna work on the interior of our offense we've got the quarterback we've got the wide receivers we've got the corners we got the safeties all the way around the outside from running back quarterback wide receiver cornerback safety we're pretty good it's just right in the middle right in the trenches right here this is our biggest issue we, we've got a linebacker he's pretty solid we got to upgrade our defensive tackles. We did that with Ed Oliver. <coughs> so now we're going to fortify the interior of our offensive line. It just makes a lot of sense to me. So if it doesn't to you, let me know in the comment section. With the 193rd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Carlos Davis, there he is, defensive tackle out of Nebraska. Yes, it's a second defensive tackle, but as I said, the talent in general is not quite there. 
is the first thing. Second thing, the guys that you have that maybe you like, there's no question they're getting up in age and they're going to need to be replaced pretty soon anyways. The third thing I want you to keep in mind, we are now in the seventh round. Very low expectations. We're just looking for bodies. But there's a little bit more method to the madness here. Ed Oliver is a smaller type of football player, right? It'd be nice to get a bigger kind of guy. Carlos Davis, six foot two, two 295 pounds. So basically what I've done in this draft, Ed Oliver is going to be our new Lorenzo Alexander. Carlos Davis is going to try his best to step up and be Kyle Williams. He can't be Kyle Williams probably, but he's going to be that kind of a role. We've got our smaller pass rush type guy, our get up the field disruptor, and we've got our big anchor taking on double teams, um, Kyle Williams type of guy. So finally, this did go fast. I like this. With the 206th pick from the Carolina Panthers in the seventh round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select David Sills the fifth wide receiver, West Virginia. So um, I mentioned that I didn't really want to touch on wide receiver too much, but a lot of it is kind of an unknown. I like Kelvin Benjamin, big body, tall dude, kind of similar to Cam Newton in terms of who your quarterback is, you know, big, strong arm guy, whatever. So hopefully that'll pan out. We'll have to see. I'm, I'm giving you Kelvin Benjamin. Outside of that, though, Zay Jones, I have no idea what you guys have got over there. Either way, again, it's the seventh round. We're taking a flyer. He's 6'3", 203. He's built like a football player, so it's just a matter of can we build him up. But also, he's a slot guy. Believe it or not, he doesn't seem to be built like one, but that is his role. He's a big body slot guy. He's only played one year so far as a wide receiver. He put up almost 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns. So this is a guy that hopefully we can move into the slot. We can develop as a slot receiver. And at the very least, we have a big body, six foot three, 203 pound slot receiver that is going to be an absolute phenom in the red zone. That's not a bad thing to pick up in the seventh round. We'll see. I mean, we got to see how this carries on. If he has another good year, I doubt he's going to be in the seventh round. But still, um, as of right now, the Buffalo Bills are pretty ecstatic about that. So, as always, let me know in the comments section what you think, Bills fans or non-Bills fans alike. Let me know your, your comments. I'm sure there's a few things that I forgot left out. Hey, you forgot we drafted this guy, whatever. This is, this is a process, as I said. We, we build over time. We gather more information. I gather more information, part of it from watching football games, part of it from learning from college football, part of it from reading your comments. So uh, we're going to get this hammered out. Hopefully you uh, Buffalo Bill fans appreciate what I've done for you. I've given you one more step closer to, I don't want to say Super Bowl because let's not be silly, but... You know, maybe when the Patriots fall off, you got a shot at being uh, number two in the div I don't know. I don't know what I did for you. We'll see. But uh, anyways, you folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I'm going to try my best to get another video up tomorrow, too, even if possible. Um, and that will be the end of that. Enjoy your day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.